round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I want to preach to you this morning, salvation is not complicated. A lot of people seem to find that they just can't live for God. But I believe that it's not a complicated life. If you really truly want to live for God, then you love the Lord. Amen? Amen. And if you love the Lord, you'll begin to live and do what God wants you to do in life. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me this morning to John 3.16. John 3.16 The Bible says, For God so loved the world. Who's he talking about? The people of the world. He's not talking about the world itself. He loves the people of the world. That he gave his only begotten Son, which is Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Simple. God loves humanity. Amen. Doesn't matter what color, race, doesn't matter how you're rich or if you're poor. None of those things are important when it comes to God's love. He loves you because you are His creation. And He is your Creator. Amen. He loves you. That's why He sent Jesus, His only begotten Son, to die for you. He took your place on an old rugged cross. Didn't have to, but because God so loved you, He did. Now some might think, well, I've done too many things and I've sinned too much for God to forgive me. No, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some might think, well, you know, I just can't live a Christian life. Yes, you can. God would never require you to do something that's impossible for you to do. See, Christ in you gives you the ability and the power to overcome evil. That's why the Bible tells us, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We have the power. Mm -hmm. God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. That right there lets us know that the enemy does have power, but God's power supersedes the enemy's power. Amen. Now the enemy, he's, he's a true enemy. I mean, if he talked one-third of the angelic host out of heaven, you think he can't talk you into hell? No. I mean, he, he is a talker. And he is known as the liar. The Bible says that he gave birth to the first lie. Amen. And there's no truth in him. And he knows where he's going. He knows where he's going to spend eternity. His destiny's already planned out, but yours is not. But he doesn't want you to go to heaven. That's why he dislikes you, because you're God's creation. He doesn't rule you. He doesn't have authority over you. He doesn't have supreme power over you. Yes, he can deceive you into believing a lie, but you don't have to because the truth makes you free. Amen. Salvation is not complicated, but the problem is so many people fail to get into the Word of God. Now, if you've got an instruction book on anything and you want to take care of the thing the book is giving instruction on, you pretty much read it and study it to make sure you do everything right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because if you don't, you're going to miss some parts or you're going to miss some steps that's going to bring problems to your life. Well, people think when we go to 
church. I can feel the little doodads, you know, run up down my spine, and I'll cry a little bit and shed a few tears and tell God I'm sorry, and then I'll just go right back out doing everything that I've done before. That doesn't work. And it's obvious it doesn't work by just looking around this morning. You know, you can look on Facebook, see people doing everything they want to do. They're out there. They plaster it on Facebook. They let everybody know about it. So you're not telling people's business. They're telling their own business. Yep. But yet when church times rolls around, they're not here. Yep. And the reason why they're not here is because they love the world more than they love God. Yep. It's simple and plain, but we make it so difficult. Now, if I say something like that, People will say, well, you're too judgmental. No, I'm not. I'm not judgmental. The Bible tells you that. The Word of God. You don't have to worry about my judgment. You have to worry about God's judgment. Because you're going to be judged by everything you say, everything you do, and even things that you do not do that God told you to do. And His judgment is going to be right. Because He's a righteous judge. But the enemy, he doesn't want you in church. He doesn't want you in the Word of God. He doesn't want you to know anything. But God does. That's why the Lord told us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, not man, unto God. Right. Amen. So that we can be a good worker in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We don't seek approval from man. We seek approval from God. So when I preach, amen, a lot of times people don't like what I preach because it steps on their toes. Well, I'm not going to be concerned about that. I'm not going to care about the fact you may think I'm judgmental. It doesn't make any difference to me. My goal is to get you to heaven. Amen. amen. And the only way I can get you there is to preach the gospel to you, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God says in Matthew 22, verse 37, 38, and 39, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Hmm. How much in your heart? All. All thy heart. And with all thy soul. And with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. Well, some people say, well, if you love somebody, you will, you will bring up any of their faults. Or you won't uh, say anything about their sinful lifestyle. That's not love. That's not love at all. Amen. If you love somebody, you're willing to tell them the truth. Because you know the truth is the only thing that's going to set them free. If I stand up here and, and the church is full and we got the bank account overflowing, but I'm just telling you lies, that isn't going to help you. And I'm going to stand accountable one day and end up in the devil's hell because I'm lying to you. I'm not going to do that. See, I have to know that one day I'm going to stand there and I'm going to give an account of every soul that God's ever brought my way. So I want you to know the truth. And salvation's not really complicated. It's not really hard to understand. And it's not really hard to live. Are you going to mess up at times? Sure you are. I'm not saying you won't, because I do too. But you know what? The more we get into the Word the less we have problems with the world. Amen? Amen? See, the Bible says, keep your mind stayed upon the Lord and you shall be kept in perfect peace. So if your peace is not perfect, then your mind's not stayed upon the Lord. But he just said in the Word of God to love the Lord thy God with all what? Your mind. Amen. The mind is a place where the devil is constantly bombarding you with thoughts. That's why the Bible tells us and teaches us to cast down every wicked imagination and bring the captivity, every thought to the obedience of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. If it doesn't pass the test of the Word of God, get rid of it. Cast it out. Is it that easy? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. 
You know, you can come to the altars, you can weep and you can cry and you can say all kinds of things and make all kinds of promises. And we know people do that. Amen. God, if you'll do this, I'll do that. God, God, just make sure I get this and I'll do this for you. And, and when they leave the altars, it's all over. The crime's over. The vow's not there anymore. But the Bible says, don't make a vow unless you're willing to keep it. Amen. Be better not to vow a vow than to vow one and not keep it. That's what the Word of God says. But see, if you don't know the Word of God, then, then you don't know what it says and, and you're not going to be able to walk, amen, in the Word. Amen. You've got to walk in the Word. It's a lamp to your feet that lights up your path. The world is steeped in darkness. Uh, that's why the Bible says I called you out of darkness and brought you into my marvelous light. The light is the Word of God that illuminates our path. John 14, 15 says, now I want you to really get a hold of this. If you love me, yeah. keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, one of the commandments that God, amen, instituted and Jesus told us to do was to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. They stopped doing that in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 10. They wrote about it because the Jewish people were under such great persecution that they wanted to escape persecution so they went back to the synagogues and went back to sacrificing lambs and they forgot about Christ. See, there is no other lamb that can be sacrificed. He's already been sacrificed. Amen. He's the spotless lamb of God, slain from the foundations of this world. Can you imagine that God, when He created you, already knew your life beforehand? That's why He says about some prophets, I knew you before you were ever conceived. I knew you before you ever exited your mother's womb. I knew your name. I knew what you were going to do, how you were going to do it, if you were going to succeed or if you were going to fail. Now God called you. And if God called you, He's able to keep you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, He's able to keep you. He told the Father, Everyone you gave me, everyone that you committed to my hand, I lost none of them. Except the son of perdition, the predestinated one Judas, uh, who would eventually betray me with a kiss. Him I lost because he was more concerned about money than he was concerned about the kingdom. Look around you today. If I text some or call some, they'll say, well, I, I took overtime, and I, I can't be there. I, you know, I got to get enough money so I can enjoy life. You don't know when your day is coming. But it's appointed as a man to die once, and then you're going to stand before God. Judgment's going to take place. And, uh, you know, like I get on my phone, these little emojis and everything else from my text, God ain't accepting that. You know, God ain't accepting that. And that ain't going to make a bit of difference. And we're living in a time and an hour when we need to realize Jesus could come at any given moment. I can understand how that anybody could sit in this ministry and, and be taught by me and now not know anything about the signs of the times or just clearly doesn't care about the signs of the time. We're living in a day and hour, folks, when Jesus could spit that eastern sky at any moment. We're living in a time when we may not make it through this service. That's how intimate the coming of Christ is. It can be any given moment. But so many have given up. And it's scriptural. There's going to be a great falling away. Don't be part of those 
that fall away be part of those uh, that endure to the end because they're the only ones uh, that are going to be saved. Hmm. Endure to the end? That means it's going to take a little something. That means you may have to go through some persecution. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Christians that are martyred in our modern day. That have given their life for Christ. And here we can't give up a little something in the world to even make it to a church service. Seriously? You know, if you love me, he said, you'll keep my commandments. That's the way somebody knows you love them. I mean, if your wife or if your husband promises you something and never, never follows through with it, you, you begin to question their commitment to you. You begin to question, are you really in love with me? I mean, you promised me all these things, but never got nothing. Hmm? Never got nothing. Never follow through with anything. Well, I wonder if that's the way God feels about many people today. Just don't follow through. I mean, you say something, and you don't follow through. How many people we've had at these altars that say, I'm, I know God sent me to this church. I'm here. I'll be here uh, until Jesus comes. Or, or I pass away, but I'm behind you 100% and not here today. Yep. Haven't seen them in a long time. I see them on Facebook, drinking, doing everything they shouldn't be doing, but they ain't in church. See, a lot of people taste taste of the heavenly things. But then they turned their back on God. And the Bible says it would have been better if you had never known than to know and turn your back on you. But so many do. Have you tasted of the heavenly things or are you eating at the table that God's prepared? Even in the midst of your enemies. God has that table prepared. You can be dining with the Lord and the devil can be having fits all around you, trying to upset so many things. Brother Fred, if we just could see in the spiritual realm how many battles take place where God has divinely protected us. The other day on the expressway, Guy passed me flying and all of a sudden got in front of me and all of a sudden realized there was somebody slow in front of me. That's the reason why I was going slow. And then he hit the brakes real hard, turned his SUV, almost flipped it, and then almost rear-ended another car. God protected me. Amen. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind or my heart that God did protect me. Could have easily just rammed into me or rammed in the other car and made me ran, ran into those cars. But God protected us. How many times people have been coming head on and, and, and just in time get out of the way. And God protected us. See, we don't see all those things and many times we don't even have a, a comprehension of what God has done for us. We, we go through the day and we just think everything is just normal. Everything is just the way it is, but it's not. There's an angelic host out there. Amen. And God has given you, amen, angels to protect you, whether you know it or not. Amen. They protect you. You might see them at times, and at times you may not see them. But salvation, folks, is not complicated. It really isn't. I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, and I'm going to read a scripture from Amos 8.11 and it says Behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord I believe we're in that time of famine yeah. I really do I believe we're in that time of famine because I believe a lot of people behind the pulpits are not preaching the Word of God. I believe they're getting up there and preaching something. Amen. They did it in Paul's day. He said, you did run well, but who did hinder you? What was the problem? You were running good. You were doing great. 
But somebody or something brought a hindrance into your life. And he gave up. See, you can't give up. This is a race of endurance. you got to finish. The good news is you don't have to finish first. Because the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Amen. And all of us are going to get the same pay, amen? amen? Just like the workers that went late in the day, and those that started in the morning and bored through the heat of the day, they all got paid the same thing. We all got eternal life if we walk in Christ and live in the Lord and endure to the end. I mean, we're going to get different rewards when we get to heaven. Different crowns. You sit on the seat and do nothing all your life and done nothing in the kingdom of God. That's exactly what you get when you get there. Some come, amen, and the works go through the fire and everything that goes through the fire is gone. It doesn't stand up to the word of God. Amen. It could be because of self-glory. It could be because of many different things, but it doesn't make it through the refining process, the Word of God. And you are being refined. You wonder why you have trouble sometimes? You wonder why you, you get sick sometimes? You wonder why uh, things happen that you don't understand? Well, that's, those things are going to happen. But we're in a refining process. And just like the goldsmith, he heats that fire up on that gold and he begins to scrape off all the impurities. And Brother Steve, he does that until he can see his reflection in that gold. And that's what God wants to do with you. Scrape off all those impurities until he can see himself in you. See, if you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. If the word of God is in you, amen. The Bible says you cannot sin. What it literally means, uh, if the seed of God is in you, you cannot live an habitual lifestyle of sin. The difference between a saint and a sinner is the fact that the saint hates sin and the sinner loves it. Oh, because sin does have pleasure for a season. But it's a short season. And Romans 6.23 tells us there's wages for it. And the wages is death. But it does bring some enjoyment to those. That's why they're out there right now. That's why they're doing all the things they're doing. They're not thinking about God. They're thinking about, I want to get the last gusto of life. And the problem is that most people, amen, that do that, not only do they bring destruction to themselves, but to their families. How many families we've seen in this place? Some would be committed, some would be half committed, and some would be uncommitted, and all of a sudden, none of them's committed. You know why? Because they have tongues and mouths. And they backbite, like Paul says, and they devour one another. So, you become a carnivorous person. Amen? And your light's not shining, so you don't want nobody else's light shining. Right. So you'll talk about the pastor with no problem. Oh, the pastor thinks he's something, you know. Oh, he, he preached on drinking. He preached on smoking. He preached on that. Well, so does your doctor. <laughs> Did you stop going to him? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? The Surgeon General had something to say about it. Did you stop listening to him? No, you didn't, because when he talked about COVID, every one of you, amen, shut down, shut off. Most did. I shouldn't have said that word, but we can't get it back, because now they've shut me down. And if you don't see something wrong with that, you ain't too smart. See, if you knew the Word of God, you'd realize these days are coming. COVID is a pestilence. Monkeypox. It's a pestilence. And the last days, that's what the Bible says we're going to contend with. Now, I used to think it was just natural happenings and, and natural diseases, but they're not. They're man-made. Well, see, the more you study, the more you apply yourself, the more you understand. Then you realize the devil's got people in high places. Hello. Yep. That's what the Bible says. Yep. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Rulers of darkness. Hello. Read it for you.
yourself do that. And when these people get corrupted in their minds, they corrupt everybody they can corrupt. They're just like the devil. They don't love you. They hate you. They're all in for themselves. Amen? Amen. You get people in office for 20, 30, 40 years that went in, amen, broke and came out millionaires and multi-millionaires. Something should trigger in your mind something is wrong with this. They must have sold me out. And that's what they've done. But America is the last place of religious freedom. And look around. And how many people have taken it for granted? Where other people in other countries will walk miles and miles and miles to get to the house of God. They will suffer pain just to get to the house of God. But here in America, we don't. Getting to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. <coughs> Preach the word. Who's he talking to? He's talking to each and every one of us. He's not just talking to the man and the woman behind the pulpit. He's talking to each and every one of us. He's talking to Belle. He's talking to Julian. He's talking to Nancy. He's talking to Leroy. He's talking to Gerald. He's talking to all of us. Amen. Let's pick a few names out of the hat there. But he's talking to every one of us. Amen. Even to the women that got hats on. He's talking to all of us. Preach the word. And we all preach the word. At least some word. Not always God's word. But you know you're preaching when you're not saying anything. If you label yourself a Christian, you are. Oh yeah. Your actions are speaking so loudly that you can't hear a word you're saying. See, actions mean something. Whatever action, there's a reaction. So if you're out there doing things in the world and then trying to tell somebody about Jesus, that isn't working. That isn't working. You're not helping. You're making someone a, twice the devil that you are. And that's not a good thing. Amen. If you're going to witness to somebody, witness the Word of God. Know the Word of God. Know how to stand upon the Word of God. Don't come up with some stuff on your own that's not, amen, in God's Word. If you cannot make it, amen, apply to God's Word, then don't say it, don't do it, don't act upon it. God still speaks, brother, you believe it or not. He's speaking to you right now. Preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. Hold on, fasten your seatbelt, folks. Tighten them up. Get that shoulder strap on. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering and doctrine. I looked on one preacher's uh, Facebook page this morning. I, I felt sorry for him because, man, they were giving him what for? Oh, he was judgmental. He didn't, he didn't give anybody any mercy, no grace, no this, no that. He was just too uh, legalistic. You know, that's all the names they want to call you when you preach the Word. The Bible says reprove. Hmm. To Chad, to the face, as blameworthy, to accuse, as guilty, to censor. Oh, we don't like that, Sister Kim. We hold on there. Don't you try to reprove me. Don't you try to tell me I'm guilty. Yeah, all of us are guilty. That's why we need a Savior. All of us are sinners. We were born into sin. Conceived in iniquity, born into sin. Every one of us were sinners. Hopefully you've got the Savior Jesus Christ living in your life now. And you put on the mind of Christ. And you are living a godly life before people in this world. So they can see the light. Jesus was the light of the world. And then he said, I'm leaving. He said, but I'm leaving you. And you now will become the light of the world. 
But the Bible tells us make sure that the light hasn't grown dim or become dark. Because it can. What are you talking about, Pastor? I, I, I repented. That's good. But the Bible tells us when that one devil's gone out of him, he brings seven more more wicked and foul than himself. He finds the place that he left, swept and garnished, and he comes in and takes all the other ones with him that were worse than what he was. And then it says the last day of that man was worse than the first. You wonder why some backslidden people get meaner, amen, get more sarcastic, begin to fight against God. While they justify themselves in their own bad habits, it's because they've done that. They've allowed seven more demons to come and rule in their life. If you're going to have a ruler, it better be Jesus. Because he's going to measure you. And you better measure up. Amen? Amen. To rebuke, to reprimand, strongly warn, restrain. We don't like to hear that. But well, a pastor strongly warned me to get out of that situation. But I didn't listen. How many times have you seen me strongly warn people in this congregation and they do the opposite? I seen one young lady the other day, I strongly warned, and here she is drinking and celebrating and doing all this other stuff that I know she knows is not right. Amen? You can sit there and say, well, I've seen in the Bible where Jesus drank wine. Back in that day, folks, you'd have had to drink probably 10 gallons of that wine to get drunk. It was used for the purification of the water. That was the only reason. It wasn't to get drunk. If you research the whole entire Bible, you'll find out that drunkenness is not what God wants in your life. For you to be intoxicated is not what God wants. Come on. See, God wants you in your right mind. Right. Huh? When the demon-possessed man got the demons cast out of him, he was running around the tombs, he was cutting himself, he was doing all kinds of things. They couldn't keep him, amen, bound. He would break the chains asunder and everything. Man, they tried to catch him and keep him, but they couldn't. So that devil was strong in him. The Bible says when Jesus came, those demons spoke out and Jesus told them, go ahead, if you want to go into the pigs, go ahead and go to the pigs. And the pigs ran violently down the steep hill and were into the river and drowned or sea. Amen. Drowned himself. They couldn't stand that devil. And he had them all in him. But I like what the Bible says. Next time we see him, he's seated at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Amen. Amen. Clothed and in his right mind. Now, if I preach on that, I'll become a clothesline preacher. But see, God never wants you to run around naked because when they sinned against God in the garden, what did he do? He killed an animal so that he made them some what? Clothes. Clothes, thank you. But see, if I say something about modest apparel or dressing modestly, you know, it, it's all wrong, you know, you're, you're too judgmental. No, I'm not judgmental. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Amen. You know, God never intended for ladies to powder four cheeks. You'll get that on your way home. Amen. I see all the time, you, you be someplace and women are trying to pull something down. You only got so much material. Women, you should have known that before you left your house. Amen? Yep. You, you can't, if you pull it down, you're showing everything. Amen? And on the other half. So the best thing is modest apparel. That's for the church folks. The world's going to live like that. Somebody, uh, my sister, I think, told me, said, Hell no, this is one of the states where they have naked bicyclists. Yep. And it's legal. You can drive your bicycle naked. Wow, I don't want to see that. There's some, there's some things you just can't unsee. I mean, most of the people that do that weigh more than 300 pounds. You can barely see the bicycle. We'll get on. We'll get on with it. See, but you'll get upset at me for preaching the truth. Uh, truth is, amen, that we ought to apply ourselves to the Word of God. That's right. Sometimes we need to be rebuked. 
Sometimes we literally just need to strongly be warned that those things are not godly. Right. And you will get what you sow. Amen. You will reap. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. Then the word long-suffering means to suffer long. Amen. To have self-restraint when one is stirred to anger. It doesn't say you're not going to get angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. I mean, I get so angry sometimes, I want to slap somebody. But I, what you got to do, you got to restrain. Hey Amen. Restrain yourself with long suffering. You, you suffer as long as they're in your presence. Hey Amen. Because you want to get them. But you restrain yourself because you know that's not what Christ would do. He said, love the enemy. He said, if they smite you on one cheek, turn the other. Hey Amen. That's hard to do. But it's what you got to do. See, no one ever told you it's going to be easy. Right. And that's what people think. Well, I'm going to get saved that it's going to be really easy. Salvation is not complicated. And it's not that easy, amen, at times. But the thing is, the way of the transgressor is hard. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, Sister Kim, that, that means as long as we are yoked to Jesus. That means we're, we're tied to Him. Amen? That means we're right next to Him, working. But if we're not yoked with Him, then it's going to be a hard way to go. See, if you get out of line, you, you, can't, you can't work a... a bull and a mule together. That just won't happen. You can yoke them together, but they ain't gonna work together. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm getting through some of you. Why do you think the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers? Mm -hmm. You get these people in church and say, well, I, you know, I went online and I, I found him or her and I, Oh, they, they seem, not, they're not saved, but oh, I, know, I know I can win them. I know I can win them. You ain't going to win them. They'll win you. Amen. Next thing you know, you'll be out of church. You'll be in the bar. You'll be doing everything they were doing. I've seen it too many times. It's much easier for somebody to pull you down than you pull them up. I mean, gravity has a hold. And sin will have a hold, and sin will pull you down. Why do you think the Bible says, lay aside every sin and every weight that doth so easily beset you? Because you're running the race of life, folks, uh, and you've got to finish this race. race. You've got to endure to the end to be saved. Amen. But Brother Wallace, you know, I don't know if I can do it. Sure you can, if you want to. See, you got to get to want to. I've listened to this, Sister Bella, for 45 years. I'd like to. I can't. I'm going to tell you what my dad told me. Can't never did nothing. See, you got to have a stronger love for God than you do that thing that's bringing you down. That's not allowing you to work in an efficient way with Christ. No matter what it is, you got to love God more. See, when I got saved, I was a bona fide alcoholic, man. I love to drink. I ain't going to lie to you. I love it so much, I took it to work. Amen. Strapped it to my ankle. Passed through the guard shack. I walked down the tracks in East Chicago Heights to bars, amen, that I should have never been in to buy a pint of liquor. I mean, I, I wake up in the morning, amen, not know where I was at or what I'd done. And sometimes I woke up in the morning and knew, and knew where I was at and what I'd done, and I was terrified. Sometimes you don't want to wake up. Not in those intoxicated places, amen. Because, see, you're no longer in control of your mind. Alcohol is. And when alcohol is controlling your mind, then the devil has a workshop there that he can place thoughts and ideals and things in there that will deceive you as a believer. John 4, 35 says, 
Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. That's, that's in Jesus' day. How white do you think they are now? Let me, let me read this to you. As wheat begins to mature, plants in some areas of the field may have an off-white color. This is premature dying. Oh. He said the fields are what? White. White already to harvest. They're getting ready to die. And if they die, the harvest is no good. Which could be due to drowning. You can drown in sin and lose everything. It can be due to hot, dry winds or some other stress. The pattern of off-colored heads will often follow soil types. That's why the Bible says in Hosea 10, 12, so for yourself righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your foul ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. He comes and rains righteousness on you. Don't you think it's time to seek the Lord? I'm not hardly finished with this message, but I wish I had more time. But I know some of you are probably looking at your clocks and wondering, will I make it to Portillo's in time? <laughs> or will I make it home in time? I got that roast in the <coughs> pot. It ain't going to burn. Hopefully you don't burn. Right. Amen. amen. For making church just something, amen, that you do because you feel like that's something somebody would want you to do. Folks, you've got to do it for yourself. You've got to stand before God by yourself. Accept your saved. And then you have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ. Don't go to court without a lawyer. Any judge would tell you, don't represent yourself. Only a crazy person represents themselves. Get yourself a good attorney. Well, you can't get no better attorney than Jesus. Amen. And Jesus will stand there and tell us, and now, this one right here is mine. Ain't been perfect, but he's mine. He's endured. He's gone through a lot of hardships. He's faced a lot of trials. He's suffered some tribulation and persecution, but he hung in there. He stayed firm, committed, rooted, and grounded in the Word of God. Amen. See, that's what we want to hear at the end. We want to hear, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Folks, salvation isn't difficult. Salvation is actually easy. But you've got to be in that place where you love God more than you love yourself. You love God more than anything else. You know, I put on Facebook, I think I sent a text message. Church is something you ought to miss everything else for. Hello. Yeah. No, folks will miss church for anything else. That's why we have so many empty seats today. But church ought to be something you miss everything else for. Because one day you're going to give an account what you did with the time God gave you here on earth. <laughs> Hopefully you've done the best that you could. Because all of us are going to stand there. It doesn't make no difference who you are, how much money you have, what success you had in life. You could have been a movie star, an actor, a singer, or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. A pulp or a prince. It doesn't make any difference. We're all going to stand there as individuals given an account of what we did in life for Christ or we did it for And that's going to determine if we hear the words enter in or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Never knew you. But I was in church. But I saw miracles. Ain't going to make no difference, folks. Salvation's not that hard. 
You might make it hard, and the reason why it makes it hard is because you get unequally yoked with the wrong things. And that's a hard way to go. I tell people all the time, I told a young lady, you're not, when they first started coming to church, I said, you know what? I said, God is pulling you one way, the devil's pulling you the other way. You've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision. Which way are you going to go? See, there's always going to be that way that seems right to you, but the end thereof is the way of death and destruction. That's not the way. Jesus said his way is a narrow way, and there'll be few that enter in. Look around once again this morning. Few will enter in. Even though anyone could understand the gospel. The Bible tells us even folks that's never heard the gospel have something inside them that lets them know what's right and what's wrong. <clears throat> they have a sense that there's a God, someone greater than themselves. Now they may set up an idol, they may set up a false god or something, but God gives us that thing, amen, that is a void in our life and the only one that can fill it is God himself. But we know it's there. Amen, I knew it was there. And I knew the only thing that was going to free me from alcoholism and everything else that I faced was to fill my heart with God. To love my Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and stop loving those other things. Would you stand to